Okay. All right, here we go. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jerry Thomas. I am the Arizona Indian Education Association Secretary, and then I also work at the Intertribal Council of Arizona in the Healthy Native Youth Program. And um, I will be going over uh, really quickly what is AIEA, and then we can jump into our presenters, um, our invited presenters um, from Portland, and then also um, go into the We Are Native uh, website. So we'll start right now. So I'm going to sort of introduce the health webinar series that just recently came out back in August. So again, my name is Jerry Thomas. I go by she and her. Um, that is my email to the Healthy Native Youth Program at the Intertribal Council of Arizona. Also on the line, we do have Kimberly Dinkel Begay, who is the president of the Arizona Indian Education Association. So uh, I'll give a little bit of time to Kimberly. Um, Kim, if you want, uh, we can. Uh, um, you can go into the slides of the AIEA. Um, um, the AIEA portion, um, sort of like what we did in the last session, but um, here I go. So again, my name is Jerry Thomas. Uh, I am part of AIEA and also Healthy Native Youth. Um, I also am Navajo and I grew up here in Phoenix, Arizona. And um, I work with um, AIEA and we like to come up with a lot of webinar series. So right now we uh, just sort of finished up our cultural webinar series, which we conducted a Navajo weaving class all online. We delivered um, um, loomings and uh, weaving supplies to the participants. And then we also um, have our college series, which we invite different colleges. Um, recently, we did the uh, Northwestern Indian College, which we invited um, on October 29th, and we did a webinar there. Uh, we will be posting that uh, recording uh, very soon to our YouTube channel. And then also we do have an education series, which we talk about topics related to education um, here in Arizona. And then that includes um, a lot of the topics, um, including cross topics with our college series, but also, um, for example, one of our topics that we covered most recently was um, navigating um, white institutions as Native students. So talking about colleges and how Native students sort of have to navigate um, college institutions as they go into college and university. So that's one of our most, um, our most popular uh, recordings that we have to date, but we will be continuing our, those webinar series um, as um, the new year approaches. So um, if you want any more information about that, um, you can uh, contact me. And then in making the health webinar series, we decided to do a health webinar series because a lot of students, a lot of parents and community members actually approached us and um, through email and in person and asking us um, that we wanted to sort of explore more topics um, in a different webinar series where we can talk about students' health and well-being. This came up during our um, during um, a lot of our meetings and talking about um, navigating the pandemic as Native students and parents and families and community members all had to go remote during the 2020 um, uh, COVID pandemic. So, you know, right now uh, we provide local and regional uh, resources to Native youth. And what we wanna do is have presenters um, from Healthy Native Youth like for example, me here in Arizona, uh, we wanna uh, collaborate also with the Healthy Native Youth Programs in Portland and Northwest area, and then um, local and regional presenters. And then we also receive feedback um, uh, for our webinar series. So we usually like to do a poll uh, after, or we like to do uh, any comments or questions at the end. And basically this webinar series, we wanna deliver effective um, health education services, but also we wanna do um, uh, provide resources. So that's the main goal for this uh, webinar session today is to sort of uh, highlight and show resources that native youth can actually benefit from. So we promoted this um, to um, young adults and we promoted it to uh, native youth and parents, and then also those working with uh, Native youth as well. So we are very excited to have 
um, our presenters here today. But uh, very quickly, uh, Kimberly, uh, would you like to present what AIEA is? Sure, always the opportunity to share out about our organization. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, as Jerry mentioned, my name is Kimberly Dinko Begay. I am of the Kiowa, Caddo, and Pawnee Nations, originally from Oklahoma. I currently reside in Tucson, Arizona, and work with the Amphitheater Public Schools as their coordinator for their Native American Education Program. And as Jerry also mentioned, I currently sit as the president for the organization, Arizona Indian Education Association. And so uh, just a little bit about our program. Um, we just uh, there's a lot that we do. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization to where we uh, go out and, and we have a mission of providing resources and uh, opportunities to our educators so that they can uh, have access to these different resources for to assist our Native American students within our state so that they can, um, if they're anything with the academics to help them do better in school, uh, whether that's providing any type of Native American resources to the teachers or to the counselors, to the administrators, to the schools in general. Um, that's something that we provide during our meetings and we provide out among our educators. And so as you see on the slide, uh, we're composed of a lot of educators and community members. We have a very diverse membership. Um, we also have uh, presence from the Office of Indian Education with the State Department of Education. Um, we allow them to provide updates during the meetings, as well as from the National Indian Education Association. There is a representative that also attends who provides an update from on Indian issues, uh, Indian education issues from a national point of view. Um, we are dedicated to improving the K through 12 system. We also work with our college students. So it also involves our college education of the Native American students within Arizona. Um, as mentioned, we collaborate with our federal, state, and tribal programs within the area. Um, that's both in state and on a national level. We want to ensure that we reach out to all these resources and provide this to our educators and our students. Um, as mentioned, we work closely with the Department of um, Office of Indian Education at the state level. Uh, they are very good and supportive about providing um, outreach for our, our organization as well. And they have uh, several lists that they, or email lists that they send our information out to. So we have had a good response with that. And so we're very appreciative with um, their support. Um, as you see, we have different resource links. We have a webpage. We are currently under the Intertribal Council of Arizona. They provided us a, a page solely for our organization, Arizona Indian Education Association. And it's www.itca online backslash AIEA. Um, you'll find our contact information, our calendar updates, and any events or activities that we have throughout the year. We also have a YouTube channel. If you spell out the whole name, Arizona Indian Education Association, you'll find us very easily. We update all of our videos, including our general meetings, all of our webinar series, including our educational series, cultural series, and our um, health, healthy series. And so those are uploaded to our YouTube site. We also have our event, any event recordings uh, that are uploaded. Currently, we have our Educators Award uh, celebration uploaded to that. And so that's our YouTube. We also have a social media, which is our Facebook page. Um, it's www.facebook.com backslash AIEA 2003 backslash. And we provide, we try and keep this updated as much as possible with different issues relating to uh, the Native community or anything related to Indian education. So we want our membership and our community to be well informed of anything out there as far as that may affect our uh, community. And so those are just a few of the resource links that we have. And upcoming events and activities. Um, we do have our general meeting coming up. It's every third Friday of every month. So it will take place tomorrow. Um, we usually have, um, if we have professional development that usually is after the meeting that is held and, um, or if we have special presentations, short presentations, we usually include those during the meeting. So tomorrow we are actually having Great Canyon University come and do a special presentation. 
We are also doing a special recognition of our um, 2021 scholarship, student scholarship recipients. And so we're very excited about our meeting tomorrow. It's a special meeting um, or special time that we're going to have for our students. And so we're looking forward to that. Um, if you want to get on the email list to join our meetings, it's open to the public. Please email Jerry. Her contact information is there. And one of the last events we have for this semester before the year ends is our Protecting Our Land Winter Youth Camp. Uh, this, this came out of interest from our students during one of our youth conferences. They wanted to learn about what treaties and what the land meant to, what the significance of that was and specifically relating to the treaties. And so we created this camp and it's more of a cultural camp that we provide to our students. And we have had such a positive um, impact and feedback from our, our students and even our um, college mentors that help us uh, we invite our elders to be a part of that. And so it's a very unique cultural camp that our students keep coming back on. This year, we're having it um, December 19th through the 21st. Registration, if you're an AIEA member, um, which our membership application is on our website, uh, it's half the price of what the uh, regular registration fee would be. So $20 for AIEA members. For non-AIEA members, it's $40. Um, you will get a student camp package. We have packets that we're going to be sending out or um, delivering during that time. And so if you're interested or if you know of any students that are interested in being a part of our winter camp, we encourage you to contact Jerry and let her know and she'll be sure to get your information down. Uh, but again, it's just a unique cultural camp that um, our students, they learn a lot. This year we're focusing on the um, harvesting and as um, I can't remember, I think, Jerry, <laughs> but we, it, it's really cool, but we're having, uh, we're going to teach them how to do medicine bundles, we're going to teach them how to do calendar paintings, um, and also we're going to do um, different cultural activities with them, but it's a, it's a time where they can learn about our culture, our beautiful culture, as well as just the different tribes within the area. We have 500 and 74 different tribal recognized uh, tribal nations. So there's so much that we can learn and share among each other. And so uh, again, if you know of any students that would like to be a part of it, uh, please let Jerry know. Also, if you know of any college, college students that would like to be a college mentor, we are currently seeking those as well. And uh, so, and any elders, if you think they may be interested in serving as a um, elder in residence virtually, uh, just contact Jerry and let her know. But those are a few of the events and activities that we have uh, that for the remaining of this year. And, and that was that it. Yeah, that was the okay. last slide. So uh, we are ready. So without further ado, um, this is our uh, general information that's on our web page. But um, that's pretty much it from AIEA. So without further ado, um, Jane and Tommy, whenever you're ready. Sweet, turn my camera on. See my messy house. <laughs> um, and then we, we have till four, correct? Uh, yes. Sweet, all right, let me... Um... Share my screen here. All right, which one do you guys see? We see the presentation. You're good to go. Oh, sweet. That, it always, I've, I've had it where I couldn't fix it and they see all your notes. You got it on the first try, you nailed it. Good work. Sometimes I, sometimes I have crazy notes, um, but cool. Thank you uh, for inviting us, Jerry. Um, we're excited to, to present and hopefully we can share some tools and tricks, um, not only with just We Are Native, but um, throughout this presentation, if you feel like um, you like anything, we have some icebreakers, some stuff fit in our presentation and it's all for you know the purpose of obviously sharing We Are Native and Healthy Native Youth, but um, also, really tips and tricks that we've learned along the way to help engage youth. Um, but I guess not even now engage youth, but just engage people in general. Um, Zoom fatigue is very real. And I know it, it gets tough, uh, you know, just sitting and listening. So uh, little stuff that we picked up 
trying to um, make presentations a little more fun um, is what we strive to do. Um, so I just wanted to say that, you know, if you like anything throughout this presentation, just definitely let us know and we can share where we got it, how we do it, adapt and adapting. Um, we're more than more than more than willing. But uh, with that, I'll just do a quick intro and then I'll pass it to Jane and then we can get started. So uh, my name is Thomas Lee Ghostog Jr. Um, I'm enrolled Burns Paiute, but I'm also a lot of Lakota on my dad's side. And I am from beautiful Burns, Oregon, by way of Port. Right, no, I live in Portland by way of Burns. So um, I'm here in the Northwest, uh, the rainy Pacific Northwest. Uh, and I am the We Are Native Project Coordinator at the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board. So I am part of an amazing team um, of adolescent health projects at the health board that uh, assists with We Are Native and um, various different projects like Healthy Native Youth, which Jane will cover a little later. Um, but we also do some suicide prevention, mental health, um, anything adolescent health and young adult related. Uh, we all work as a team to, to create content and, and put presentations on. So I will pass it to Jane really quick and give her the time to do her introduction. Hello, I'm Jane Manthai, and I am the Outreach Specialist for Healthy Native Youth. I was born and raised in Winslow, Arizona, so uh, I'm a little jealous of the sunshine that y'all are getting right now. It has been an adjustment moving to the Pacific Northwest. That being said, um, I really enjoy the work that I'm doing here. Prior to this, I was a teacher up in Standing Rock teaching high school science, and so I'm really excited to be on the healthy native youth side of things because it's a lot of things that I've learned that now I get to communicate those with other teachers, parents, and general caring adults. But we are also a part of the adolescent health team. And with that, I'll hand it over to Tommy. Sweet, thank you, Jane. Um, so for those that are on, can you access your chat? Can I get a thumbs up to the... You don't have to like, if you know where the thumbs up feature is. Yeah, everyone else, maybe. Cool, okay, cause this next, this next uh, little, oh, do we have someone drop? Cause I said the thumbs up, oh no. Um, just, I just wanted, it's a, it's a fun little game that we like to play um, and we can use, utilize the, the chat feature and I can't really see mine, so I'll trust Jane to see him, but um, we'll go ahead and, and roll with that. I don't know how to change slides. Oh, and this is kind of just the workshop goals. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of like looking and reading over, so if you wanna read that really quick, but basically we're gonna break down We Are Native, how to utilize it, what we use, to help push the work that we do and also some resources that you can utilize directly from our, our website and um, social media. But what I was saying is we'll utilize the chat. So this is a game we like to play just to break the ice, an icebreaker, hence the word. Um, but they're all kind of native pop cultures. So I'll just go through them and then Jane, you can shout out if someone gets it. Um, Jerry, I think you've done this before, so I don't think you can play. But the others, um, it'll start out a little easy and they'll get a little tougher. So if you know what it is, just write it in the chat um, super fast. So we'll start with the first one. It's a little easy. No one in the chat yet? So you're thinking about what phrase these emojis represent. And all of them are jokes or something that's familiar, very familiar to you. Nothing yet. People must be a little shy. Well, this one we can explain and then um, the rest of them will give them a shot. Um, if you're really not feeling it, let us know. Not quite, but you're getting there. Close. So thinking about the sounds the bomb can make. Comic book style. <laughs> it's like charades or picture Pictionary. That's what it's called. 
I'll give you the I'll give you a hint. The first one is pow. All right. So you've got pow and Kimberly, you got it. All right, Matthew. Exactly. Yeah, pow. It's pow. pow. <laughs> so you kind of get the gist. Uh so we'll we'll go. I thought that one would be easy, but they'll get a little harder, easier. All right, is it Roshan? Uh, correct. I'm quick out of the gate on that one. Good work, Matthew. He's on it. Yes, Kimberly, well done. Indian taco, Navajo taco. And this is where we start getting into challenge mode. But same thing as before. <laughs> Not quite mountainside, but you know, close. <laughs> I will say when I first saw this one, I was a little tough. I'll give you a hint. It's relative for the Arizona peeps, uh, Oak Flats. So the arrow is not pointing to the side, but it is, it is giving you the direction that you need. I'll give you a hint. The first one is land. That's a big hint. Land back, yes, yep. Kimberly. Uh, Matthew, yours was funny because it was like just adjacent to what we needed. <laughs> it was probably more accurate than land back. If you, <laughs> I, give you points. I give you points. Yep, Kimberly. Yes. I think that's the fastest that I've seen someone get this slide. Well done. Oh, she's catching on. She knows what's up. Y'all are in trouble now. Last one. Matthew yes. <laughs> comes from behind. Y'all were quick on this. That was impressive. Awesome. So that's something we like to just start with, you know, to to get the laughter going. I know for us native folks, um, laughter is medicine, and it's always good to to get some smiles going before you kind of dive deep into to Zoom mode. Um, so feel free, you know, we have these slide decks that we start with, um, but we also, you know, had people create their own. So if you have anything specific to Arizona that you could think of, um, you know, the land back when I said Oak Flats as a as a um, as like an example. So if you have, you know, specific emojis that you could relate to um, Phoenix, you know, right off the top of my head, I think of Phoenix Suns, you can do something with that or, um, you know, have fun with it. And I think it, you know, gets people engaged, even if they don't have the mic, they can still type in the chat. Um, and, you know, usually maybe next time we'll do some prizes when uh, we say a shirt will, will be for the, for, you know, whoever gets the most people get really quick in the chat when we say stuff like that. So, <laughs> Feel free to incorporate that. Um, and we have one more that um, is one of my personal favorites is this started kind of as the health board. We have Harry, I call him Harry. So I don't know if you've seen Harry and the Hendersons, uh, but for the COVID messaging that we started up here at the health board, we said that, you know, Harry or Sasquatch, you know, whatever you, uh, you want to call him, he's the ultimate social just distancing champion, right? You never see him, he always keeps his distance. And so he kind of came um, in the time of COVID and we, you know, used, I call him Harry. So, you know, Harry is his name. Uh, I, I started incorporating, you know, finding like, where's Waldo? So throughout our presentation, um, he's going to be hidden. So if you see him, let me know, 
and maybe we'll do some prizes. Uh, we still have some We Are Native fanny packs um, and some We Are Native lanyards that we can uh, mail down to Jerry to distribute. So if you see Harry in our slides, uh, feel free to type it in the chat and let us know. Um, but I will say I kind of forgot where I put him. So I might not even find him myself. Uh, but if you do, let us know. Some of them are pretty easy, some of them are not. Um, so just getting right into it, you know, I definitely want to um, have enough time for discussions after. Um, but this is kind of a slide that Michelle put together that I really, really liked, um, just because, you know, it kind of encompasses what we strive to do at We Are Native with that holistic wellness, holistic health, um, not just necessarily focusing on one you know, area of health. And so this kind of applies to, you know, protective factors for youth. Um, and I think it's, you know, important that we all try to kind of remember not to just focus on one area, but try to, you know, our hardest to try to, you know, create this holistic feeling around the youth, especially, you know, I think it really incorporates with partnerships and, and what we're doing now with Jerry and, and working um, with y'all down in the Southwest, because for us, again, you know, shout out to Michelle, the communication strategies fit into that holistic wellness and that holistic approach to, um, you know, our communication strategies, because you can see, you know, teachers and educators, this might be like that realm, teens and young adults, uh, parents and caring adults. So all these, you know, mesh together to make this awesome image. And I'll let you look at it just, you know, super quick. Uh, but I really, really like this slide because for me, I'm like a visual learner. I need to see, you know, the way things carry out. I need to see, you know, I'm, I'm using my hands a lot. So I need to see stuff. And, and really, when Michelle put these slides in there, when I first presented it with her, I was like sitting there like, holy smokes, this is pretty, you know, this is outside the box thinking this is very visual, you know, and, and it's like, oh, where do I fit in these cool little, you know, diagrams and, you know, as in a partner. And so, you know, we're always looking to strengthen these, um, you know, these talking points, our, our social messaging, our social media, um, and also our partners. So, you know, just keep in mind with that as we continue um, throughout this presentation is, is what we really strive to do in our work. So the first few slides that uh, we want to share with all of you is really what drives our work. Um, I'll be honest, I was, I'm not big in epi and I'm, and I understand numbers, but like epi kind of just makes me nervous. So like all the data, all the, you know, just working with numbers is, is not my strong suit. But as when I started working here at We Are Native, you find out the importance that it holds, you know, not just, you know, crunching numbers, but that collective process of getting that data, you know, working with focus groups, asking really youth what, what do they want to see? What do they, you know, it's it's not just us giving it and saying, here, this is what you want, this is what you need. It's more, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big enough, I'm a big believer in talking with people and not at them. And I think that same approach comes with the work that we do. We have to talk with the youth. We have to talk with the young adults and not talk at them. And so, you know, that kind of translated into the data side and, and really, you know, asking them, what kind of content do you want to see? Do you want to see memes? Do you want to see cat videos? Do you want to see, you know, world star, you know, whatever, you know, how do you want to see that information? Do you want to see it on your phone, your desktop, your iPad, uh, you know, and so all this is data. And I just kind of, it clicked me my, my first year working um, with the health board. And it was just like, it's so important now to me, even though it makes me super nervous because it is data and epi, I barely pass epi. That's why I'm scared of it. Um, you know, but it, it's needed. It's really needed in, in the work that we do, and it really drives the work that we do. Um, and usually I put it in a somewhere in, in a PowerPoint, but I didn't on this one. But I always like to quote Jay Z. I don't know if we have any Jay Z fans in the house, um, but he has that song where he's like, Women lie, men lie, numbers don't. So I don't know. It always kind of reminds me of that in a weird way. So. With that, um, every couple of years, we do a youth tech survey. Um, we survey youth in their, their tendencies online, what they're doing, um, where, where they're you know, online, uh, how they're accessing it. And so this is a little report that we've done. And um, I'll just go through these slides 
a little slow because like I said, I'm not real big fan of like reading the slides because you know it's just it's there for you to interpret how how you would like. But I do like to just point out um, you know the differences in these topics and how how you know vast it is because a quick little tidbit about we are native we actually started strictly as sexual health um, but you know our, our supervisor dr stephanie craig rushing and our co-worker knew that sexual health wasn't going to cut it with just you know promoting that it, and, and youth wanted to learn way more than sexual health and so this kind of holds true with this slide um, and we've seen a shift in and you know really the identity piece which is really cool um you know sharing their stories because as as native people you know we're storytellers um and and nowadays we just have a different medium right we just have a different way of sharing these stories which is social media um which is really awesome to see and so you know again this is more of uh oh thank you Jane. i see you put it in the chat awesome if you want to really dig into the numbers and look into it to see how it could, you know, be helpful with the work that y'all do, um, feel free to, you know, look through this. But, um, you know, again, just really trying to see what youth and, and young adults are up to online was our goal um, and really sharing this and seeing how we can fit our health content into that. So they're not just scrolling past, you know, our, our posts and, you know, they're actually stopping to see what we're posting. So this is, is our insight and really trying to, to get into their heads um, with their social media activity. And then, you know, just kind of another breakdown to see where, um, see where the youth are, are coming in from. Um, and as you can see, the Northwest is a bigger presence. Hey, Matthew. Okay, Matthew, all right. I'll have to, Jane, can you mark that down? I'll have to remember that. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of just a map to really show where the where our participants came from. As you can see, it's pretty heavy in the Northwest because that's where we're housed. Um, but also in the Southwest, we, we have a big uh, following um, in Arizona and New Mexico, um, which is really cool and neat for us as partners. And then just lastly, the preference of We Are Native channels and messaging. So, you know, what, what were youth or where, where youth want to see their, their messaging, their health messaging. So um, I can tell you two years ago was Facebook was king. Um, but now Facebook dropped all the way down to three. Um, and it's really Instagram. And I can honestly say TikTok is probably number three now um, with the boom of TikTok and making videos. Um, a lot of youth and young adults are hanging out on TikTok, including us. We, we recruited uh, one of our homies, uh, Jay Deli, so he can uh, he runs our TikTok on We Are Native and he helps us out in that realm so we can stay relevant um, in that sense. Um, and then obviously 2020 was big with COVID, you know, affected everyone, native, non-native. Um, so we just wanted to ask some, um, you know, COVID-19 questions to see you know, how their activities might have changed um, with COVID, if they did change, if they didn't, um, you know, because a lot of people were at home learning from home, um, they weren't out, you know, socializing as much. And so, as you can see with, uh, with this, the online frequency actually did go up. Um, and it's kind of a no brainer, but you know, it's just nice to see visually. So that being said, um, we move into We Are Native and how we utilize all that information that we just shared, right? How do we get health messaging out that youth aren't just gonna scroll past? Um, and the perfect example is our, our Mr. Clean. You know, we were thinking like, okay, who in the time of COVID, remember when like toilet paper and all that was selling out? Yeah, y'all remember that crazy time? It was also disinfecting, right? It was like clean everything, hand sanitizer, and it still is. And so, you know, we said, okay, you know, Mr. Clean, what if he came to the res? What if Mr. Clean was your uncle? Like, what if, you know, what if he got shacked up and, and stayed on the res for a couple of years? Like, what, what, what would he look like? And so what we did is uh, our graphic artist, Corey, put braids on him. And I was like, yo, almost every uncle has a Jordan tattoo or a basketball. We got to put, you know, that on there. Uh, we gave him a little Northwest flair with his little tribal fish. Um, and so we use this as a, as a series to really promote, you know, the not only COVID messaging, but, you know, the first thing you see is like, what the heck, why is Mr. Clean with Victor, right? 
You know, why is he holding up? You know, what's your chart number? You know, and why is he taking a, um, a, a post vaccine selfie? So all of these things are what captures the youth and young adults first. And what they don't know is they're, they're, unco they're not, un they're consciously getting the COVID messaging that goes along with it. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, Kimberly, you're probably looking at Mr. Clean and then you just notice Harry, huh? Just, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Uh, but no, so, you know, just really utilizing pop culture with native youth and young adults is, is um, been working great for us. So it's a strategy that I highly, highly encourage um, and let us know we can help, you know, just think about what youth are thinking and are finding funding and go for it, um, you know, because it's better than posting a big long post about COVID and then having them scroll right through it. But with this strategy, we've been able to have you stop. Um, and there was a big, you know, that wasn't big, but there was great messaging that went behind each of these, these images. So um, it was pretty successful for us as we wanted to pass accurate COVID information, um, which brings us to our website, right? So what we did is we utilized social media to drive traffic back to our website, wearenative.org. Um, and I'm not too big a fan either of like using the PowerPoint. Oh, we have another one. All right. Yeah, you see, I don't know if you see my mouse, he's hovering right there. Um, so yeah, so uh, what we do is we utilize our website to push our, our, our health messaging. Um, and what we do is, is through our website. And I, I have some slides that, you know, are, are, are screenshots of them, but I just, I can, the only thing I can really urge you is to go to wearenative.org and look through it and kind of get lost. Uh, we strategically, you know, placed articles and other information. So you keep clicking, right? You get lost in our website, which is what we want. Um, so you can easily do that better than me showing you screenshots. So this is kind of more just background information of We Are Native um, and, you know, kind of what we offer. Uh, and then this, what we're really excited about is a couple new uh, articles that we um, added uh, to our new reamp of We Are Native. We, we included a whole new My Mind section because we knew mental health was going to be big through COVID and it still is and it continues to be. So we reamped our whole My Mind section um, and we also asked, or added our Ask Uncle, um, but that's already getting a new, um, a new, uh, makeover that you know we, we we're changing it i don't know if we've officially announced it but we're doing um ask Rustis. so we have a new section and shout out to jane she's part of that uh, crew and so we have jane as a relative and we have um, a few others on our team so am i am i echoing yeah you've got an echo huh oh, is it gone? Yes. Oh. Sorry, I, I hopefully ever heard what I said. If not, I said something really cool. But I just know I said shout out to Jane. She's part of our new Ask Relative team. Um, we're adding more, more relatives to the mix to start answering um, our most popular section. Um, and then this is just obviously a little shameless plug about getting at us at social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, um, just, you know, Feel free to give us a follow. That's where you'll see all of our information. Um, and then just to wrap up my little section, um, I'm really sharing what, you know, if you work with youth directly, uh, the best part of our websites that they can utilize, um, and that's Ask Auntie, right? It's an anonymous Q&A service, Ask Relatives Now, actually, that we have provided for youth who can ask literally any question that they would like, um, and it gets... Um, and it gets a response. Um, and depending on the severity of the question, we can put out responses within 24 hours. And so um, it's been a great tool. It's been, you know, for the last six years, our most popular section of our website because it does, you know, give you that privacy. Um, and really, and sadly, I think also is it takes away that embarrassment of asking, um, you know, a relative, asking a, a nurse, asking your guardians, your parents questions that you are uncomfortable with yourself and so that's why it continues to be one of our most popular sections um, because you know it is a trust trustworthy worthy sex section of our website 
Um, we have a, a text messaging service. If you want to text native to nine triple seven nine is our generic one. Um, but we have a few other partnerships that we've created. Uh, one of our newer ones is we did a, a partnership with the crisis line. So um, we have a native specific. If you text native to seven four one seven four one, um, it'll be native specific. So we're super excited about that partnership that uh, we had with our our Thrive program, um, and then. We have a caring messages uh, series that we also have developed. Um, so if you text caring to 65664, um, it's just regular reminders. It's more of like a mental health, um, you know, building you up type, type campaign that we're excited that we have. Um, I'm going kind of quick and I apologize. We can share the slides, but I just really want Jane to have time as well to speak on Healthy Native Youth. But we have a couple contests going right now. So we have an art contest um, that closes actually in December. So if you have youth that are artistic and you would like, um, you know, have them enter their artwork, it's there. It's on our website, uh, wearenative.org forward slash contest that they can um, enter. And then there's another section of the contest, which is a community project. So the prizes are $2,000 to $10,000, and that one's a community-type group project. Um, there's a lot more information on that one um, on our website. So if you work with youth groups or know a, of a youth group that would be great for this, that are already doing positive things in the communities, I would highly suggest that they um, uh, apply for the group project, because that's a lot of money um, to, to spend on, um, you know, your community. And then lastly, our gear store is open. It actually closes on Friday at midnight. So um, if you're interested in any We Are Native gear, um, it's currently open and it will be closed on Friday. So if you text gear to 9779 as well, it'll send you the link. So I just put that in the chat. Um, it's on our, also on our website. So with that, I'll, do you want me to keep sharing and, and just Keep moving forward, Jane. Yeah, um, is it possible for you to, can you just skip to slide 38? So I'm going to do some very quick overviews of things. So keep going, I'll tell you when to stop. Yeah, I was gonna say, just tell me when to stop. I... Okay, so actually go back one slide, it'll be easier. Cause that's so small, I forgot how small the screen, the text is on that particular screen. Um, I only have a couple of minutes, which is fine. Um, we Are Native is like the flagship of the adolescent health team anyway. They've got the cool stuff. Uh, Healthy Native Youth, on the other hand, is definitely oriented more toward the adults. And we work very hard to make sure that our information is aligned with what, healthy, uh, with what We Are Native is doing. And a big reason for that is so that the, the caring adults that are in a youth's life um, can talk to them and know what to expect from the conversations that those kids might be bringing home. Um, and to help facilitate that, we have curricula that are available on the site. Um, they are culturally responsive. They're all evidence-based. Um, a lot of them are free and they're comprehensive. And, you know, these are intentionally designed to be best for American Indian and Alaskan Native youth. Um, these are, culturally responsive. We try to incorporate you know, Southwest, uh, Northwest, Northeast, Southeast. Um, we've even got some Alaskan imagery coming in. So we're really starting to expand this reach. Um, and this is what the website looks like right now. Um, I'll put the link in the chat soon. But if we go to the next side, or the next slide, excuse me. Uh, we also have this resource, which I understand if it's very small and hard to read, but basically this allows you to compare all of those curricula and to find the one that best suits your needs. Um, you can compare it via uh, age, you can compare it whether or not it's LGBTQ inclusive. You can look at all of them all at once and decide what's best for your community. Um, and I believe now we're up to like 16 curricula on the site. So we are growing and we are always looking for new ones. And if you have something that you would like to suggest or submit, by all means, go to the website and just hit the curricula feedback button. And we would love to chat about what you've got. Um, the other two things that I want to, well, 
three. I've got, I'm, I'm going to take the full 10 minutes. Uh, if you could go two more slides, Tommy, to the lesson enhancements. Yes. Okay. So um, I, as like, a former teacher, I personally really like this because in addition to the whole curricula that we have available, we also have what are called enhancement activities that we think we're going to rebrand just be standalone lessons. But we have these uh, lessons that have already been designed complete with the lesson plan and you know, all the resources that you need right at hand to to be offered as um, standalone lessons. You know, you don't have to incorporate the entire curricula if you don't want to. You can just throw one of these lessons into your uh, program that you've already got going on. And kids respond really positively to these. Um, these are great for just, you know, peppering in some of that information if that's all that you're able to do. So we, it's very time responsive and flexible. And then my other thing that I wanted to point out is uh, going two slides forward again to the community of practice. We have this very cool program called the community of practice. And this is a monthly um, opportunity to talk with other folks who are also working with native youth and to share resources and to talk shop and discuss best practices. Um, it's an open Zoom call. Usually we have a speaker and then we have time for discussion afterwards. And a lot of folks find this really helpful because, you know, this is where you can ask questions in real time and talk to people who are already implementing some of these programs. We can really pick their brains about what works and what doesn't work. So it's, I find it very useful. It's one of the best ways to find out what's going on elsewhere in communities and what the conversation is at this point in time. Um, and then my last and final thing that I wanted to highlight is the very next slide. Um, our, uh, another really valuable resource that we're able to offer is a text message campaign called Talking is Power. And this is for parents, it's for caring adults, it's for teachers, it's for anyone who might be uh, working with a kid and who wants to provide accurate and reliable information. And so Talking is Power um, offers tips and resources for talking to youth about sexual health. Uh, it provides help with getting that conversation started with your kids. It, it, I would have loved had my parents had like a actual <laughs> plan for how to discuss the talk with me instead of winging it in the way that they did, you know. And so this allows parents and, and other adults to, to be more informed and to like have a have a plan of attack that's not absolutely mortifying for talking to kids and helping you know facilitate that conversation. Um, and if you text that, it's free. Um, it's I believe it's like one text message per week, so you don't get completely overwhelmed with it. And again, same thing. It's aligned with what we've got on the website as well as what we've got in We Are Native. And so the information that you're getting in here is timely and relevant to the information that youth will be receiving around that same time, which makes it great because then, you know, you can do the, oh, you know, I've just been thinking about this um, conveniently as you're being very strategic in how to talk with your youth about topics that are sometimes very difficult, um, both for the adult to talk about and for the kids to bring up. But uh, one thing that I've seen it in the classroom and, you know, I've, I've been seeing it in a lot of the surveys and um, data requests that we've been sending out is that kids really want to talk about these things. They just don't want to be the one to start the conversation. They are very receptive to learning more about sexual health and uh, healthy relationships. But you know, when you were 14, were you ready to ask somebody about, well, what exactly, how exactly do I put on a condom? No, and you know, 14 year olds do not change. So we just, we do our best to provide that information for them in a way that's not, that doesn't feel embarrassing. It doesn't feel shameful. It's affirming, it's inclusive and it's, it's accurate. And you know, that's what it's all about is we're just trying to make sure that, that we are helping communities raise healthy youth. And so, um, we have a couple of minutes here. I know that I kind of whipped through mine, but 
I mean, genuinely go and check out wearenative.org. That's the, the website that's designed specifically for the youth. And then check out healthynativeyouth.org for uh, resources that are more oriented toward the parents. I'll put those both in the chat, but in our remaining couple of minutes, um, is there anything, any questions, comments, thoughts that you would like to share with us? Or better yet, is there anything that you saw maybe in the way that the presentation was conducted that you could incorporate into the next time that you're speaking? Um, did you find the emoji game more successful or the Harry? Which of those two was your favorites? If there, I mean, if there's no questions, I would also, um... I don't know, Jane, do you want to speak on it? Or I, I don't, I can, doesn't matter, but just really us yeah. trying to be inclusive. Um, yeah, um, so they, we conducted a study that granted was before I had joined the board, but we were, they were really starting to look at both uh, gender identity and sexual orientation. And because, you know, we understand that those are, uh, it's a spectrum and those are two separate things. We were able to reach 138 participants. Um, they, this was a separate study to understand the specific uh, needs of native LGBTQ plus youth. Um, and it was really about just making sure that we were providing the best and most accurate information to the people who need it most. And so with gender identity, um, you'll notice that the orange slice um, it was predominantly female uh, participants, followed by mostly male participants. And then we had a few who identified as trans men, trans women, and genderqueer. And then a couple of folks who just went with uh, cisgender, meaning they identify with the gender that they were born as or assigned, and then other, which is fine because we are learning so much about gender nowadays. Um, and then with sexual orientation, uh, moving over to this other graph, you'll see that the majority of our respondents were identified as heterosexual. And then there were a few who identified, 22 of those respondents identified as lesbian or gay. Um, 76 identified as bisexual, which is pretty interesting to see how those numbers are changing over time as youth develop and explore their own identity. And then Something that's very important for Native communities is um, 13, excuse me, 15, 15 folks identified as two-spirit. Uh, and then we also had, you know, something else, I don't know, prefer not to answer, but just starting to get an idea of who are the communities that we're serving. And so it's cool to be able to see this information in front of us, because that means that we can be better about how we affirm others and so on the next page, um, you know, we've been putting together, the board has been putting together this program uh, called Paths Remembered, and it's for clinicians talking with uh, LGBTQ plus youth. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is what it comes down to, asking, affirming, acknowledging, and advocating. Um, as you're reading that, you know, one thing that I've seen quite a bit is that you know, the easiest way to affirm youth is to recognize them for who they are, whether that's using the correct pronouns or using the name that they've asked you to call them. Um, it is such an easy and simple thing to do. And for most kids, you know, for most transgender youth, when they tell you who they are, just believe them, you know, and affirm who they are. And in doing so, um, I believe it can, it's a use of correct name and pronouns uh, is associated with a 56% decrease in suicide attempts. And that's phenomenal. Simply by calling somebody, by acknowledging who they are, you know, that in and of itself is a protective factor. And so we are working to um, provide supports for clinicians to talk to the LGBTQ plus youth. And then we're also working to make sure that our sex ed curriculum that we offer are gender inclusive, for example, and that do incorporate the very specific needs that LGBTQ youth have. 
because sometimes those are different than what uh, you know heterosexual cisgendered teenagers need to know. Um, and so with that, if we go to our very last slide, um, we have, next slide, I lied one more, there you go. Okay, so we have this entire campaign and toolkit for how to affirm uh, youth and you know celebrating our magic that's available online at padsremembered.org. It's also available on Healthy Native Youth. And that one's amazing because that is specifically for uh, American Indian, Alaska Native, transgender and two-spirit youth, but also their relatives, their families and their healthcare providers. So we, uh, we are applying our holistic approach in every way that we can to make sure that we are serving the community as best as we can. And that brings us right to four o'clock. So thank you all for attending. Uh, we work with a huge team. We couldn't possibly do this on our own. And I am really glad to have the chance to talk with you today. Thank you, Jerry, for inviting us. Thank you, Jane, and thank you, Tommy, for being here. You know, you did drop a lot of information, but all of it is very pertinent. And I know, like, after this, I'm, I'm going to need to do a follow-up because I want to see if we can, I know, Kim, that you probably have some ideas, too, for the AIEA announcements, so we're probably going to do a separate uh, student and youth information drop for all the, uh, the announcements for all of We Are Native resources, because I know that um, I only encountered maybe a few people in Arizona that actually um, subscribe to the, um, to the Healthy Native Youth newsletter, uh, the e-newsletter, but I wanna see if we can get that out into the students' hands here at the schools, and then also um, the, do another separate adult resources to know about for them to have on hand as well. So we're gonna make sure to get those resources out and, um, you know, again, we'll, we'll follow up with the both of you so that we can make sure that we can distribute uh, those resources by email and that, you know, um, those are here on the call as well. I do have your emails and uh, we can probably follow up with the Harry too. I think that's a really good idea. We probably need to start doing that to be more interactive in our presentations with our AIEA meetings and, you know, finding Harry was actually one of my, one of my good ones back um that I really enjoyed but the emoji game was was a hard for me <laughs> oh my gosh I was like I felt like I was like really challenging my nativeness I was like did I really miss that like by that much but you know what it was really fun so um I do have everyone's names that did uh look for Harry and then we can follow up so um that sounds good but does anyone else have any questions so far regarding uh the presentations today All right. Uh, sure, I'll share out Jerry really quick. Um, I was trying to give everybody else a chance, but um, I, I just want to say thank you to the um, We Are Native group and the Healthy Native Youth. Um, such great resources that you provided that, as Jerry mentioned, we are definitely going to share out more. We have been promoting the contest, um, the art contest, and also the community project contest. We've been promoting that. Um, since it came out to our community. So hopefully some of our kiddos have uh, participated or will participate in that contest. But uh, th these are great resources that you have that are available. Um, I've actually shared out a lot of what you shared today with my own ch children um, since they were in probably middle school and high school. They're both in college now. Um, one's getting ready to graduate. And so um, it's, it's really great resources for our kids. You know, and it is one way on how we can get that information out as well as how to share out that type of information to them, to talk to them. And I love the fact that you guys have the ask your relative um, environment, you know, ask your auntie, ask your uncle, because that, you know, within our communities, that's the sense of belonging that we have, that usually the kids go to their aunt or to their uncle and ask different questions rather than their own parents, you know, for 
uh, embarrassment of what might be said or how they might view it or whatever reasons. But so it's one of the ways that we can connect as a native community for that, you know, and, and I wish we had these resources when I was little, you know, that way, um, it just as uh, Jane mentioned, you know, it, it wouldn't be so uncomfortable you know, on how your parents talk to you about these things. And so um, again, I just wanna say thank you for taking the time to share out these resources to us. Um, what a great uh, webinar this session was. I had a lot of fun. You know, I think the uh, emoji game was a lot of fun. Um, I'm kind of like with Jerry, I, I started to question my indigenization, you know, on a, how could I miss that, you know, <laughs> and uh, really looking around for Harry, so, you know, it's very interactive, and um, I, you know, I, I just really enjoyed it, so I just wanted to express and say thank you for taking the time to share out with the, with our community today. We look forward to having you all come back at any time. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate those words, um, for real. Um, you know, the work that all of you do down in the Southwest is definitely appreciated as well. And um, that being said, you know, if there's any of the presentation that you felt drawn to, you know, reach out to Jane, myself, Michelle, Steph, our team, because we can like any of the topics we spoke about today could be like their own topics and probably have been, um, you know, in the past, so if you were drawn to specifically, you know, the text messaging specifically to the LGBT two spirit content, definitely let us know and we can tailor to any information that we shared today, because it, you know, it was, I felt like it was a lot, but um, we just get so passionate about the work that we just have to like put it all out there and then see where it goes. So definitely let us know if you want to want us or anyone to focus on something very specific you heard. Great, thank you, Tommy. So um, as a follow-up as well, um, we are recording this session. So this will be posted on the AIEA YouTube channel. Uh, usually we do that the day after the event. So, um, but uh, if anyone has any questions for the presenters, um, they did post their emails inside the, um, inside the chat box. And then also, um, if you want to get in contact with them after the fact, um, again, my name is Jerry Thomas. Um, I did put my email as well, and um, we'll be able to connect you guys. But uh, let's see here. But if no one else has any questions or comments, we can end this session. And then again, thank you, Jane. And thank you, Tommy. It's always nice having you and getting to talk to you again. And then um, I'll follow up with you again so we can sort of get those resources circling back here to Arizona. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Yeah, have a great evening. You too. Thank you. Mm -hmm.